the Middleborough faculty faced off against the Harlem Wizards. Winter Sports held their banquet. And we update you on the latest MHS construction progress. This is MET News. Welcome to MET News. My name is Kyle Maloney. Let's get right to the lead. On March 16th, the Harlem Wizards came to Middleborough High School and played the teachers from all grades in a friendly basketball game. The senior class fundraiser was a big success, raising over $7,000 for events like Senior Mystery Ride and Senior Prom. I'm here in the Joseph Macy Gymnasium to get a closer look at the Middleborough Magic versus the Harlem Wizards. I got a chance to interview some of the players and teachers. Let's get a closer look. Your 2019 Faculty All-Stars! Yeah, here we go! Come on, make some noise! And gentlemen, make some noise for the world-famous Harlem Wizards! Melissa Larson! Everywhere we go, if someone is going through something, we can help them out. It brought so many different faces and ages of people together that you sometimes see every day and people that you don't see that often. The gym was filled. It was so much fun to see everybody. We sold about 800 to 900 to about 550 free sales. I think the game will affect the community in a positive way and bring people closer together. Although this event raised money for the senior class, students of all ages came together to watch and take part in this amazing event. Here are some highlights from the game. Girls basketball had an amazing season, making it to the second round of the tourney. Shen Hurley caught up with the team to hear about their success. Uh, I think we're, we're prepared to work hard in practice and you know, we walked out the field and you know, the hard work I think is going to pay off and I think we're ready to go. It 
It's halftime and the Seachams are up 31 points. Now let's catch up with some fans to get their perspective. How do you think the game's going so far? Uh, I think the game's going great. They started off great. They started with energy. Uh, they played well. They executed. And uh, they came into halftime with the lead. So we're going to close it out in the second. They have a lot of energy. And, uh, and hopefully they can bring this one back to the game. I caught up with some of the captains post game since their next tournament game is Friday and we're going to see how they feel with their win. Um, I'm really proud of us for this game. Um, I'm really proud for the whole season in general and I'm just looking forward to the next few practices to get ready for the rest of the tournament. The girls' basketball team has made tourney for the first time since 2001. The victory at Madison Park led them to the second round of playoffs against Poniquet. Led by coach Jeff Powers and captains Kara McManus and Sam Crowley, the team fought hard against their toughest opponent yet. On Wednesday, March 13th, all the winter sports athletes gathered together in the auditorium to celebrate each team's accomplishments at the winter sports banquet. Here's a highlight made by Liam McDonald. I was thinking about the band. I was thinking about the fans. We were underground, loading merch in that 12 passenger van in a small club in Minnesota. And the snow outside of first half. I just wanted my name in the star. Now look at where we at, still growing up. Still growing up. I would lay in my bed and dream about what I've become. Couldn't wait to get older. Couldn't wait to be some. Now that I'm here, wishing I was still young. Those good old days. I wish somebody would have told me, babe. That someday these would be the good old days. All the love. Wish I didn't think I had the answers. Wish I didn't drink all of that glass first. Wish I made it to homecoming. Got up the courage to ask her. Wish I would have gotten out of my show. Wish I put the bottle back on that shelf. Wish I wouldn't have worried about what other people thought and felt comfortable with myself. Rooftop open and the stars above. Moment frozen, sneaking out and falling in love. Me, you, and that futon. We just begun on the grass dreaming. Figuring out who I was. Those good old days. I wish somebody would have told me, babe. That someday these would be the good old days. All the love you won't forget. And all these reckless nights you won't regret. Cause someday soon your whole life's gonna change. You'll miss the magic of the good old days. Never thought we'd get old. Maybe we're still young. Maybe you always look back and think it was better than it was. Maybe these are the moments. Maybe I've been missing what it's about. Been scared of the future, thinking about the past while missing out on now. We've come so far. I guess I'm proud. At night, worry about the wrinkles around my smile. I got some scars. I've been around. I felt some pain. On Monday, February 18th, spring sports practices started for the 2019 season. With the construction of the new high school recently breaking ground, the tennis teams have had to relocate to Camp Avoda, and the track and field team will be having some home meets at Carver High School. The first home games of the season are on March 28th. Good luck, Sachems. After the success of the unified basketball team in the fall, MHS has decided to form a unified track and field team for the spring season. This team would allow students with intellectual disabilities to participate in track and field events and form partnerships and bonds with other athletes. Practices begin Monday, March 28th. If you're interested in becoming a partner for the athletes, it's not too late. Contact Ms. Lane or Mr. Sylvia with any questions. 
Up next, we fill you in on the MASC Spring Conference and MHS Construction Progress. But first, here are two demonstration videos produced by TV1 students, Julia D'Amelia and Derek Gomet. Hi, my name is Julia D'Amelia from Middleborough High School, and today I will be teaching you how to tie your hair in a ponytail. Today, I will be joined by my friend, Emma Kitson, to help me with this demonstration. The first step to putting your hair up is to gather all of your hair into your desired area. Next, smooth out the hair. Now that you have your hair up and smooth, it's time to bring in the elastic. Have all your hair in one hand, pull, pull the elastic, pull it over your hand in your hair, and pull the hair through. Make a 180 degrees twist with the elastic, grab the hair, and pull it over your hair and your hand. Then do the same thing one more time. After you're done, make sure the elastic is nice and tight and pull your hair. My name is Julia D'Amelia and thank you for watching my How to Put Your Hair in a Ponytail. Hi, my name is Derek Gomet, and today I will be teaching you how to make a phone call. In this tutorial, you will learn the proper way to use a cellular device to make a phone call. The first and most important thing you will need is a cellular telephone. This is what you are going to be using to make the phone call. Next, you will need a phone number, which you will type into the telephone in order to call someone. Each telephone has a unique phone number, which is divided into three sections, the area code, the prefix, and the line number. Let's type this number in and make a phone call. Hey, Steve. Yeah, can I get a large pepperoni with extra sauce? <laughs> All right, see you in 20. Thanks, big man. There you have it, the proper way to make a phone call on a cellular telephone. Thanks for watching. Cheyenne Hurley suffered a hard loss right on the chin running for president at the annual MASC conference. Nevertheless, she still learned some valuable lessons and had a lot of fun. Here's Chris Cogan with a bittersweet story. At the 42nd annual MASC conference, Shannon Hurley ran for MASC president. So my campaign was producing leadership and it was greatly inspired by TV Pro and everything that we do in there. So it's like making movies and learning how to um, make your skills go from your like lowest level of just learning to being able to teach others how to be a leader and teach others what to do to be a leader. Here is Shannon delivering her speech to 1,200 students from across the state. It takes initiative to help others simply because it's the right thing to do. This is because leadership starts with belief. It starts with a leap of faith, a deep breath, and the willingness to stand by something until the end. What I love about MASC is meeting new people and learning all about all the things that they do at their schools and things that we can do at our school to improve the community and just the school in general. So, MASC, I leave you with this. The lights are on, the camera's rolling, now let's take action. So at Hyannis, we have elections, which are three positions, president, vice president, and secretary, and then the people that don't win, um, there's another election where you get to be a delegate. And so at Hyannis, you learn um, many leadership skills, you go to workshops, you meet new people, and it's a lot of fun. While I was running, I learned a lot about myself as a leader and a lot about people just in general as leaders. Um, I learned a lot about specific leaders and how you have to put specific people together so that you can get a job done, because if you put two people together that aren't going to do anything, then nothing will be accomplished. And then I learned a lot about myself as a leader and that I don't like to be in the center of attention. I like to let others shine and let others have the opportunity to do things and let others have the opportunity to learn. Great job to Shannon from everything she has done in her campaign. This has been Chris Cogan from MET News. 
Middleborough Television Production was fortunate to produce the annual Hyannis Conference video. Middleborough brought along a crew that consisted of Kaylee Tobin, Jake Steiner, Aaron Conley, Aileen Petty, and Noah Miles, all advised by Adam Pelletier. This team stayed up all night working together on this video for the 1,200 student council representatives. Let's take a look at the 2019 MASC Spring Conference video, Leaving Your Mark. Switching to a new lane Foot to the floor, man Searching for the real thing Make somebody else Sometimes ain't no shame Head to the clouds saying It's like Can I get a connection? General session of the 2018-2019 MASC Annual Conference is officially called to order. The amount of inspiration I draw from this organization is incredible. Musicians, athletes, mathletes, and magicians, all of us have a spark to lead inside of us. To be with you, MASC, is the greatest adventure. MASC, we are all here to bring out the best in each other and make connections. Celebrate ya, appreciate ya. So I urge you, MASC, to pack your bags, book your plane tickets, and locate your leadership with Lizzie. In order to gain this connection, we need to be unafraid to step out of our comfort zone, unafraid to be our true selves. No matter what kind of leader one is, MASC welcomes them into their family and provides them with the experience they will need to reach their goals. And I'll always be on your island.
always be on your team. Leadership starts with belief. It starts with a leap of faith, a deep breath, and the willingness to stand by something until the end. We have the ability to mold new friendships, new skill sets, and most importantly, mold better leaders. Know that you possess all of the amazing leadership qualities and don't be scared to push yourself to let your true colors show. We have sailed these seas for years and it is our time to explore uncharted waters together. Ohana means family and family means no one is left behind or forgotten. practice you become more of. Success doesn't happen on accident, it happens on purpose.
MASC, thank you for leaving me speechless. Thank you for believing in me. I'm so proud to call each of you one of my true friends. Oh, I was born to be We'll be back with an update on the construction of MHS. But first, here are three more demonstration videos produced by Emma Kitson, Nora Williamson, and Shauna Gallagher. Hi, my name is Emma Kitson, and today I'll be showing you how to easily order a coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. First, you should download the Dunkin' Donuts app. Then, make sure you have money loaded onto the app. You can do this with either a gift card or a debit or credit card. Next, you're gonna open up the app and click the order button on the bottom right corner of the screen. Then you're gonna choose the Dunkin' Donuts you wanna pick up your coffee from and choose whether you wanna walk in and get it or drive through. Then you're gonna pick the type of coffee you want and how you want it made. Then you're gonna add the item, check out if you're done, and submit your order. And now, whenever you're ready, you just click this button that says, I'm ready to pick up, and you can head off to get your coffee. And now, I'm back from Dunkin', and as you can see, I have my coffee. It was fast and easy, and all I had to do was walk right up to the counter, and there was my coffee waiting for me. I'm Emma Kitson, and this has been how to easily order a coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. My name is Nora Williamson from Middleborough High School, and today I'm going to show you how to do an Indian dribble and field hockey. Before we start dribbling, we want to make sure our body is in the correct formation. We want to start by bending our legs in a squat position like we are about to sit in a chair. We don't want to hunch our back over, and we want to keep it straight at about a 45 degree angle. When you're holding your field hockey stick, you're always going to be playing on your right side because you can only use one side of the stick. Your left hand is going to be up higher towards the top of the stick and your right hand is going to be towards the center. When you're dribbling, you're always going to be rotating your left hand but keeping your right hand in place. So to start, we're going to put the ball in front of your right foot, then push it to your left side in front of your foot and the playing side is going to be facing the ball. Then we're going to use the side to push it back to your right foot. Then repeat it. My name is Nora Williamson and thank you for watching my demonstration on how to do an Indian dribble and field hockey. This is Shauna Gallagher and welcome back to another how-to video. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to correctly shoot a soccer ball. 
The first thing that you are going to do is make sure that you have the proper shoes to assure that your feet are protected. For example, sneakers are good for indoors so that you do not hurt your foot when, you're, when you kick, and cleats are good for outside so that your feet will be protected but also allow a grasp into the ground in a good range of motion. Next, you are going to make sure that you have a proper size soccer ball according to your age. If you are 8 years or younger, then you will be using a size 3 ball. And if you are 8 to 12 years old, then you will be using the size 4. If you are 12 years or older, then the size 5 ball is the one that you're going to stick with for the rest of your life. Now that we are done getting all the correct materials to shoot a soccer ball, it is time to learn the first step. The first thing that you're going to do is step in with your plant foot and make sure that your toe is perfectly aligned with the tip of the soccer ball. The next thing that you're going to do is point your toes on your kicking foot and use the center or the top of your foot, also known as the shoelaces, to kick the center of the ball. Now that you've learned the basic things about the soccer ball, it's time to put all the steps together and start practicing how to actually shoot it. And that is how you correctly shoot a soccer ball. Thank you for watching another how-to video with Shauna, and I'll see you next time. This past week, the Fontaine construction team has gone to full workload, tearing down trees around the Middleborough High School to prepare the land for the construction of the new school. They are constructing a road off of Wood Street to access the construction site without disrupting the entrance of school buses and staff through the main school entrance. Once the new school is completed, this road will be used as a secondary entryway to the new school. Thank you for joining us for this episode of MET News, and remember to tune in Friday, March 29th for our next episode. I'm Kai Maloney, and have a great night.